Have you ever wondered what would happen to your mind and to your body if you try to stay awake for 11 days straight? Well, me neither. But in today's video, we'll find out together. Hello friends and family, my name is Kapabite and today we will be going over one of the most insane science experiments that was self-imposed of all time. I don't know, maybe it was just me, but whenever I had a friend sleep over when I was a kid, my mind always went straight to, alrighty, we're not sleeping tonight, we're playing video games until it's 6 in the morning. And little did I know that was actually one of the best ways to actually stay awake, because it engages your brain and tricks you to not sleep. And still there were like two times where I actually pulled it off to stay the whole night awake. And I just pass out right after my friend went home and completely ruined my sleep schedule for the next week. Good times. But anyways, that's enough about me. I feel like anyone can pull an all-nighter like as an adult, right? I mean, sure, you'll feel like a zombie for the next day and you'll fall asleep very early, but then you'll sleep like 12 hours and you'll be fine again. But I honestly feel like that's the limit, right? One night? I can't even fathom staying awake for two nights in a row. Is that weird? <laughs> okay. And seriously guys, the story I'm about to tell you is just absolutely insane. But before we jump into that, if you enjoyed the first ever episode of Psychology Student Explains, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on this video and if you consider subscribing to my channel to see more content like this. So let's just begin this crazy story. Let's go. The year was 1963. The day was December 28th. The subject of this self-imposed experiment was a high school student named Randy Gardner. For some reason, he decided he wanted to know what would happen if he stayed awake for 264 consecutive hours, which adds up to 11 days. That's right, guys. I did the math. To help him, two of his best friends in the world, whose names were Bruce and Joe, remained with him at all times to make sure he would not fall asleep. And although this all sounds like he was doing this for the sake of science, he actually thought of this particular number because the world record at the time was 260 hours and he wanted to beat that and be on the world record book. Also, the guy who did stay awake for 260 consecutive hours, he survived and he was fine after he slept a good full night's sleep, so Randy thought he would be fine as well. And you might me thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't sound very scientific, does it? And you could justify it by saying, well, but Randy is not a scientist. But then when you look into it and you actually read the report, an actual scientist called Dr. Demet apparently agreed with him. This Dr. Demet just stayed with him and made sure that everything was going smoothly, that he didn't die in the middle of it, and that there were absolutely no naps allowed. Just remember this particular trail of thought next time you're scrolling on Instagram and you see a post saying, Scientists say that, insert blank. Scientists can be stupid people too. So, as I was saying, he set the goal for 264 hours remaining awake to beat the record of 260 that came before him. And I also wonder why not like 260 hours and a half or 261 hours but 264. But okay, whatever, I'm not a scientist yet. Alright guys, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna read the report here. One. Okay. So on the first day, he woke up at 6 a.m. feeling alert and ready to go. Can't relate. On the second day, he began to drag, experiencing a fuzzy heading, lack of focus. By day three, he became extremely moody and he was basically snapping at his friends left and right. But as good friends that they were, they remained with him at all times. Oh, and BT dubs, good friends don't take part in this crazy stuff, okay guys? That's what we learn in psychology school. Do not help your friends to decay into insanity. Or, you know, just try not to. Don't do it on purpose. But anyways, let's stick to the report. By day three, he was already having sensory hallucinations such as, and I quote, He felt demons scratching the skin of his entire back? Well, that's kind of specific. Like, how would he know it's demons? Like, for all he knew, he could be a cat, or he could be just a guy with really long nails scratching his back, right? Like, if he couldn't see them, how would he know it's demons? He couldn't hear them. He could be just that guy. What was his name? Melvin Booth. He could be Melvin Booth scratching his back for all that he knew. But okay, whatever. What do I know about the hallucination? Now, day four. 
By day four, he had trouble repeating common tongue twisters such as, and they include an example here, how considerate, thank you very much, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Bro, first of all, I have trouble like reading this off a of paper, not repeating it after someone, and I have eight hours of sleep backing me up, and it still took me multiple tries to record. I'm not kidding. Peter Piper picked the pack, Peter Piper picked, Peter Piper picked the pack, Peter Piper picked the pack of pick. Peter Piker picked a pack of pickled peppers. And actually second and most importantly, is this really something worth reporting as a major side effect of day four? Like they went to day three, right? And he was feeling that demons was scratching the entire skin of his back. And then by day four, he couldn't say that phrase. And his friends were like, yup, that's, that's when he lost it completely. He could no longer say it. Can you imagine what he's going through? So anyways, back to the experiment. By day five, Randy hallucinated that he was Paul Lowy, a large black football player, whilst our Randy actually looked like this. At this point, his friends, excuse me, friends, started to wonder if this experiment couldn't cause him like permanent brain damage or death. So they stopped everything, they apologized to him and to his mother, and Randy went to sleep and everything was over. No, I'm just kidding. They, they went on for the whole 11 days, actually. Now, how did they manage to keep him awake for so long, might you ask? And I have the answer right here for you, as they actually included every strategy that they did, if we might want to replicate this unquestionable genius experiment. Strategy number one, they went cruising in their car. I honestly, sincerely have no idea how that helped. I can't imagine not falling asleep while cruising in the car whilst I haven't slept for six days straight. But sure, okay, whatever. I guess the cars weren't that comfortable back then. Makes sense. Strategy number two. They took trips down to the donut shop. Man, this report is really thorough. Like, they didn't include like we did some trips across the street or we went or we went to get food or something like that. They specifically told us that they went down to the donut shop. Strategy number three. They were blasting music. What music did they listen to in 1963? What's the music from the 60s? The Beatles. Were the Beatles around by 1963? All right, let me check here. First Beatles album. First Beatle album was out by March of 1963. Wow, yeah, they've basically been out for a few months. Honestly, how would you sleep if the Beatles album was just out on all platforms, such as your tape and your cassette? And I actually have no idea where people listened to music in 1963. And final strategy, they played marathon games of basketball and pinball. Basketball. If he's trying to stay awake for 11 days, why would you play basketball? Like, that's such a energy consuming activity to do. Like, why would you do any physical exercise? I would guess that like the best thing you could do is just stay at a chair. And yeah, sure, playing pinball. The pinball actually makes sense. But the basketball, man, is he even trying? Like, I honestly don't even know how he did it in the end. So as more days went on, Mr. Gardner's speech began to slur, his vision started to get blurry, and he frequently became dizzy. He was also troubled by multiple hallucinations of all kinds. So everything very pleasant up until now. And it's at this point that his parents became concerned about what he was doing. And they required that he checked in at a hospital to be checked up every day for the remaining four days that he had and honestly guys I can't even imagine like how that conversation went on like like going into the doctor's office and trying to explain why your son has to be checked up um good morning sir nice to meet you I'm Randy's mom um my name is Patricia so my son decided to stay awake for 11 days straight and he's not feeling very well could you check if there's anything wrong with him Madam, please look for a psychiatrist for your entire family. This is beyond my qualifications. In all seriousness, the doctors found nothing wrong with them, allegedly, physically. And our heroes continue their adventure of keeping Randy awake for the remaining four days. At this point, there's not much else to say, because his symptoms honestly couldn't get any worse. They were basically just the same things, but a little worsened. Like, he got more hallucinations, his speech was so slurry no one could understand it, and he kept forgetting things as they went along. He was basically just a zombie. And finally, at 2 a.m. on January 8th, he actually broke the world record. Hooray! Yay! Yay!
When he did, a small gathering of doctors, parents and friends got together and celebrated the fact that he had just beaten a world record. And then they all went home. And I honestly just have one question here. Why in the hell did they have the party right after he broke the record before he went to sleep? Like, it has been 264 hours. I bet they threw like a one hour party that was off the clock and Randy was all like... for the whole thing. Just let the boy sleep for God's sakes. You can throw the party the next day or next week. Who are these people doing this for? Did anyone actually think any of this through? And after all of it, after living with basically psychological trauma for the rest of his life, Randy finally got the night's sleep that he deserved. He slept for 14 hours and then he woke up feeling just fine and ready for the day. Which honestly just gets me more confused, like how were 14 hours enough? He hadn't slept for 11 days. But still the question remains, was he really awake? Or was he just sleepwalking? Did he remain asleep for the rest of his life? But sleepwalking and interacting so vividly with his hallucinations that they became his reality forever. We don't know, but honestly, hey, at least he got it, at least he got the record, and at least he kept it for a long time, right? Wrong. Two weeks later, two weeks later, a dude named Jim Thomas got the record by remaining awake for 266 and a half hours. Two weeks, guys, two weeks of glory. That's what he got. And by the way, 10 years later, a woman named Maureen Weston broke that record by remaining awake for 449 hours, which adds up to 18 and a half days. Yeah, I did the math again. Everything about this story just honestly makes me a little sad, but also incredibly happy, because seeing stupid just fascinates me. But if you want to take anything away from this, anything at all, is just sleep. Just sleep guys, sleeping is great, it makes you form memories and improves your cognitive capabilities and it gets your body to recover from everything you lived throughout the day and from the day before. If you're a kid it gets you to grow and through all your life it balances everything from hormones to making your emotions feel like relatively normal. Sleeping is important. I mean if you want to party one night and like stay awake in a bar talking with your friends or if you want to play video games with your buddies through the whole night, that's all obviously fine and I encourage that, it's very fun. But more than two days, three days, four days, 11 days, 18 days, do you know what you might get if you actually break a record like that? Two entire weeks of fame and science has shown us again and again that is really not that interesting. So yeah, take this away from this video. Don't try to beat world records that might damage you psychologically or kill you spontaneously. But if for some reason you want to do it despite everything you've just heard, call me and I'll bring the camera and the pinball machine. All right, guys, so thank you once again for tuning into the video. I hope you had fun. I definitely had fun. I took the experience reporting the story I just told you from this book right here. It's called Elephants on Acid and it's by Alex Boise. If you want to check that book out, I'll leave the link in the description. You just click right there and see that. If you enjoyed the first ever episode of Psychology Student Explains, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell to be notified every time I have a new video just for you, which is every Saturday, by the way. If you want to watch more, there's a video right here. You can just click and I'll see you there. Or if not, I will see you next week. All right. Bye, guys.